Okay, so I heard a massive attack. I'm not exactly sure what it is right now. I'm gonna go watch the news. Um, I'm gonna. I'm gonna um, put this on a tripod and go watch the news. Okay. Okay. Now I have it on the tripod. Oh my god. They believe it was an airplane. I'm going to go watch the news now. Okay, come on, baby. Yeah, she knew, she knew, she knew. Oh my god, you should, oh, I have a, a videotape of it. 
You should just see this thing. Wow. Oh my God. Are they saying, you know, I should get off the phone because Dave might be trying to call me because I left a message. I'll call you back. Now there's helicopters in the sky. I, I can't get them, but <clears throat> apparently CNN is saying that an air, uh, a, a twin-engine airplane crashed into it.
my god! But it looks like the other, now it's the other tower that's burning up. It's the other building. I think another airplane crashed into it. I feel like we're under siege. The other tower is now on fire, the other World Trade Center. It was like an airplane that crashed into the other one. I don't know what to do now. What are they saying? It's like an air. Another airplane flew into the second tower, Kelly. I feel like we're under siege. I was watching CNN and there was another airplane and then there was an explosion. Oh my God, now the other one's on fire. I can see both buildings on fire because we're under siege. I think, I don't know what's going on. I don't know. Okay.
my God. Now it's an airplane has hit, separate airplanes have hit both World Trade Center towers. Oh my God. Something and I don't know where to go or what to do. I got the patients from my apartment that I can see both of them just burning up.
you know, I may have. I had my. I got a new computer, and I've had it going ever since. It's definitely terrorism. It's, I mean, what else would it be? Two planes. The second plane, Kelly, you could see it. It turned to hit it. You should hear my neighborhood. Up. It's so weird because I'm looking down at the street below me. Okay. Mm There's something going on. There are people running down my street. I'm not sure what's happening now, but
will do that. Which I knew. So, I mean, now they're saying that the planes were hijacked. <laughs> and, oh, I'm just scared, Mary. <laughs> and I have the whole thing on videotape. I think I even videotaped the second plane crashing into the building. I just set my camera up and turned it on. It's scaring me now, though, because there are people running down my street, and I don't know what they're running from. Like, maybe the subway? I'm... She's gone now. He always flies American. Or, well, not always. He, but it's impossible to know, Mary. I don't know. But I think the planes that were, the, one of the planes they said was a plane from Boston. It was hijacked in Boston. So I don't think that they can really hijack it in New York and take it, you know what I mean? Oh, it's so scary for Mary. I can't even tell you. I mean, they're still flying through the air. I totally feel like we're under siege. I really do. I could go downstairs. I'm like afraid to move now. There are people running in my neighborhood. Well, my nanny was supposed to come, but I assume she's not coming today, obviously. You should see this thing on fire. You can't even imagine it. I can walk there in five minutes.
in kind of a straight line going uh, up Washington, D.C., and we have reports of a fire there. Uh, this, what you're looking at now is Washington, at least if I can see the monitor in front of me, it's a little tricky from where we are. Yeah. That looks to me like the old executive office building, and then back of it, you see the large plume of smoke. Here in New York, uh, the sirens everywhere, people out in the streets staring at this uh, grotesque scene of the World yeah. Trade Center buildings. It was in February of 93, if memory serves me correctly, that there was an attack, a yeah. terrorist yes, they did attack at yeah. the World Trade Center. I could uh, hear it. The the day. Trade this center, this uh, is Matt when they blew up the, the uh, Trade Center uh, that day. I was so right. No, I heard now. this. I mean, I, I, I almost was out of my mind. Attacks on the World Trade Center, and then we have these two reports out of Washington, the fire at the Pentagon. Chris Plan is still uh, on the phone. And do believe. Um, All right. I think I can him in a second. Greta Van Susteren is at National Airport in Washington. Greta, what are you hearing? Uh, I just got off work and I just the New York planes was stalled. I'm at National Airport on the parking lot. I heard a huge noise. I looked over in the direction of the Pentagon with a huge plume of smoke coming from that area. I can't verify it's the Pentagon because they're rebuilding through the way. You see particles coming down the air. The white particles. I can't tell that that is. I heard a noise right in the air. I I was nothing wrong because I left the house like two weeks after. Yeah, I think you know, you know, the other one happened at like five years ago. I was so shocked. Yeah, I was so shocked. Yeah, I was so shocked. Yeah, I was so it was a plane that crashed at the Pentagon, and the Pentagon is being evacuated. There is a large fire there, and that is the smoke you see in the shot that you're looking at now. Yes, Whether that fire is in the building itself or outside, we have not yet confirmed. There is a fire on the mall in Washington. The cause, the cause of the fire on the mall in Washington, we cannot yet tell you. We can tell you that the White House has been evacuated, and we can tell you that two planes have crashed into the World Trade Center in New York. All of this began uh, just a little more than an hour ago. I hope Casey do not. Chris Plant, tell me I wonder what's going on in the school with Daniel. I hope she's not at work. Yes, I'm sure this is. I hope she's not at work. I was told by several people that there was, in fact, an explosion. I was told by one uh, witness, uh, an Air Force enlisted, uh, senior enlisted man, that he was outside when it occurred. He said that he saw a helicopter circle the building. He said that it appeared to be a U.S. military helicopter, and that it disappeared behind the building where the helicopter was being loaded. Excuse me. And that he then saw a fireball uh, going to the sky. Uh, I'm attempting to make my way around that side of the building in my car right now. Uh, to see if I can get uh, a better uh, visual perspective on the scene on that side of the building. But I can tell you that security has certainly clamped down. The U.S. Park Police and other federal law enforcement uh, department has arrived in force on the scene. There's a Park Police helicopter overhead. Uh, every car that arrives at the gate uh, where I was located was being stopped by officers at gunpoint. Everyone is being forced out of their vehicles as they arrive at the Pentagon. Very tense situation, obviously, uh, but initial reports from witnesses indicate that uh, there was, in fact, a helicopter circling the building, uh, contrary to uh, what the AP reported, according to the witnesses I've spoken to anyway, uh, and that this helicopter disappeared behind the building and that there was an explosion. Uh, that's about all I have from here. Okay, well, let's do this, Chris. Why don't you continue reporting, and we'll pass on a couple of other things that we're picking up along the way. Uh, trading at the New York Stock Exchange. The Stock Exchange, as many of you probably know, and some of you don't, is in that part of Lower Manhattan, not quite far, as far down as the Trade Center, but it is in that part of Lower Manhattan, and trading has been suspended there. Bridges and tunnels coming into New York have been closed. Uh, that will create a whole different set of problems. We are also being told that the FAA has suspended takeoffs and landings. And I want to make sure I get this right, guys, that in all, uh, at all airports around the country, yeah. uh, so the I'm going to get home. Yes, I'm going to get home. I'm going to see if Stacy left Daniel in school and what's going on. And then I'm going to go home. Okay. Yes. Okay. 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 Okay.
trying to figure out what exactly is going on. And there are several now incidents that look for all the leaders now to do a major terrorist attack here in the United States. Yes, I will. All airports all across the country are closed. Oh, so David is coming back. He's trying to get home from the airport. All flights are closed down. Yes, yes. Prior to that, and we don't know the current situation, 
and the vice president and other administration officials on the scene were meeting in the White House Situation Room, which is in the basement of the White House. Whether they had stayed on the complex or not is unknown to us at this moment. I spoke to an administration official oh, shortly after the president delivered his statement. He said, obviously, the operating assumption here is terrorism. The initial assumption this official said was that this had something to do, or at least they were looking into any possible connection with Osama bin Laden. The administration recently released a warning that they thought Osama bin Laden might strike out against U.S. targets. Uh, just to add, John, a bit to what you've been saying, we're getting a report from Associated Press now that the White House was evacuated after the Secret Service received what AP is describing as a credible, excuse me, a credible threat of a terrorist attack against the White House itself. Um, and I, I expect you'll be checking that out. We'll try and confirm that. But that's what AP is reporting right now. Again, this all began about an hour and 15 minutes ago here in Lower Manhattan when the first of two planes crashed in to the first of the two towers behind me at the World oh, Trade Center. God. And you can see the smoke billowing out of the, of the front tower now. And then about a half an hour later, just as uh, emergency crews were converging on the scene, as uh, eyewitnesses were gathering on the street corners, a second plane drove in too. And you can see that plane coming around the building right now in this tape and there you can see the hit as it comes through what looked to me at least and this is the first time i've seen that tape come to the back side of the tower i guess that would be the south side of the tower and and then the smoke and flame coming out the front side um, again that was about a half hour after the first attack which was at about 8:45. Look, we want to be careful here. We don't want to get too far ahead of this, but obviously this has all the appearances of an extraordinarily well-coordinated and devastating terrorist attack here in the United States. Uh, certainly nothing like it since Oklahoma City and nothing like it here in New York since the terrorist attack on the same World Trade Center buildings in February of 1993. Uh, at the Pentagon, a plane or a helicopter has crashed apparently as part of whatever this operation has been and uh, it, uh, Jamie McIntyre is there. Jamie, what are you hearing? Well, the, uh, Aaron, the, uh, there is a lot of confusion here at the Pentagon. It appears that uh, something hit uh, the Pentagon on the outside of the fifth corridor uh, on the Army corridor. Several Army officers I talked to reported hearing a, a big explosion, seeing shards of metal uh, are coming past their window. The Pentagon has been evacuated. Uh, emergency services personnel were rushing to reports of several people trapped in the building. Most of the building's 24,000 people are outside of the building or in the center courtyard uh, as the emergency team try to sort out what has happened here. There is, of course, uh, thick black smoke building from the scene. Uh, there's a lot of confusion. The Defense Protective Service, which is the police force here in the Pentagon, has been urging people to get out of the building uh, and move away from the scene so they can handle the uh, emergency situation. Again, it appears that an aircraft of some sort did hit the side of the Pentagon, you know, the left front, which uh, makes the sort of point on the center side of the Pentagon. So uh, according to a lot of army officers, they were doing a and so
That is an incredible terrorist threat. We have two explosions, two planes in the World Trade Center here in New York. And what this second explosion was, it took place about a part of the south, that was the south tower that apparently collapsed. We don't know if that was from the impact of this first plane that hit it, or whether something else has happened there. We'll work on that. Our Washington bureau chief, Francesco, is on the phone. Frank, what are you here? Karen, I just drove past the Pentagon across the 14th Street Bridge, which is now totally tragic. We're beginning to hear uh, emergency sirens and rescue personnel uh, uh, standing out across Washington. There is a gigantic black billowing cloud of smoke that has been rising over the Pentagon. We heard Jamie McIntyre a moment ago describe where that uh, was coming from. I can also tell you local radio in addition to talking about evacuations as we've heard of the Pentagon and the White House is reporting that the Capitol buildings have been evacuated and the Treasury Department has been evacuated. Washington, D.C., the nation's capital, is exceptionally tense and uh, clearly taking steps as if it is virtually under siege here. We don't know specifically, as you, as you said, uh, what has taken place at the Pentagon, but this is very serious, striking at the heart of the national government, and as John King was explaining... Frank, Frank, I, Frank I, say, all right, I, I need to interrupt you for a second. Uh, again, there has been a second explosion uh, here in uh, Manhattan at the, at the Trade Center. We are getting reports that a part of the tower, the second tower, the one a, a bit further to the south of us, uh, has collapsed. We are checking on that. We are also told that the Sears Tower in Chicago has been evacuated. And what I can't tell you on that is whether there was something specific that happened there, whether there was an attack on that building yet, we're checking that out, or whether there was a warning, whether there was a threat of some sort, or whether that is simply precautionary. What we can tell you is that just in the last several minutes here, two or three minutes, a second or a third, I guess technically extraordinary event has happened here in lower Manhattan. You can see this extraordinary plume of smoke uh, that is, or was, at least, the second tower of the World Trade Center. Uh, oh, perhaps three or four minutes ago, you could, from where we were standing, see that second building that is just a bit to the south of the first building, uh, but you can't see it anymore. It is covered with smoke. A large pool of smoke also coming still from the first tower where the first plane hit at about 8.45. We can, by the way, if we can cue uh, uh, the tape, we can show you that second attack, uh, or at least the second explosion in the Trade Center that occurred at about 9.15 Eastern Time. As you can imagine, Lord, there you can see to the right of the screen a plane coming in. We do have a report of a hijacked American Airlines plane. It comes into the south side, and then boom, you can see the fire coming out the front of the north side of the building, I guess that would be the northeast side of the building. And then just in the last several minutes, there has been a second explosion, or at least, perhaps not an explosion, perhaps part of the building simply collapsed. And that's what we saw, and that's what we're looking at, as the smoke now just covers lower Manhattan, almost as far to the end of Manhattan Island as you can get, is where the trade centers are. The, the, Trade of the Sears Tower in Chicago has been evacuated and we continue to check on the circumstances there. The Pentagon, the State Department, and the White House have been evacuated in Washington as well. The President has said, We can show you now what happened just a few moments ago at the Trade Center. Watch the building to the left, to the, to the back of those two buildings. This is just a few minutes ago. We don't know if something happened, another explosion, or if the building was so weakened, it just collapsed. But, uh, we have a, one of our producers on the phone, and I didn't get the name, so why don't, uh, why don't we just go ahead? You there? Yeah, this is Rose Marcy, New York. Rose, tell me what you know. Just a few minutes ago, we saw there's a portion of the building where the first plane struck the seemed to be buckling and fire almost just the cops were going to fall. Shortly after that, two people, and they hard to tell whether they were being pushed, or they, they physically approached themselves from sort of riverside of the building, moving the west side of the building, and appeared to jump. 
from the top floor, just under where you are seeing the smoke and fire. That is extraordinary. The South Tower, the World Trade Center, has collapsed. And again, tell me, how long ago was it that you saw this? This must have been about, about five minutes ago, and prior to that, you could see heads popping out of windows right beneath where that big gaping hole is, so there appeared to be people alive right below where the crash point was. So we're trying to find some way out of there, and just as the thing started to buckle, the sun was plummeting from, from that top floor. Right, and, and this is stating the obvious, we apologize for that, but obviously people were uh, already at work here uh, at the Trade Center when this happened. Uh, we don't know how many people uh, have been hurt in all of this. We have no idea at this point as you look at an aerial shot coming from the, I guess that would be coming from the south uh, of the Trade Center or what is at least the Trade Center behind those uh, huge plumes of smoke. All airports across the country, every airport in the United States has been shut down as the FAA and the government tries to figure out exactly what has happened, what is at risk, what is not, who is behind it. Are there more explosions, more attacks yet to come? Uh, here in New York, trading on the New York Stock Exchange has been suspended, at least for now. All bridges and tunnels coming into the city have been shut down as police try and clear uh, clear the way. We can tell you, as we were coming in uh, perhaps an hour ago, uh, there was a, a convoy, I can't think of a better word, a convoy of fire and police trucks racing down the West Side Highway. This is in the middle of rush hour. Obviously, every uh, available fire unit here in Manhattan has been brought to the Trade Center. Outside the White House, John King, our senior White House correspondent, John. Oh, and they have pushed us even further back away from the White House now, and there are more than a half dozen fire trucks. Some of the Secret Service now patrolling the perimeter of Lafayette Park, which is directly across from the White House, have automatic rifles drawn to keep people away from the park, and they're policing back and forth. You can probably hear additional fire apparatus arriving on the scene uh, senior White House staffers who were evacuated, all they could tell us is that they were told that there was a credible threat on the White House as well, and that they were told to evacuate the premises. What we do not know is uh, whether or not the Vice President and the National Security Team have stayed inside the White House Situation Room. We know that they were directing and monitoring operations from there, as was just about 15 minutes, 15, 20 minutes ago. But the White House staff, the Executive Office Building staff, and all the office buildings around, including the Treasury Department, and so the government and some non-government office building, people have been evacuated out into the street. And again, the Secret Service now putting up yellow police line tape, and some of them going left here park with automatic rifles, which is being quite extraordinary here across the White House. Uh, John, um, tell us if you can what the government's national security apparatus uh, will do right now. I mean, what, what do you guess is happening, and where is it happening?
took in Elm Street, about 10 blocks north of World Trade Center. And just before 10 o'clock, parts of the building began peeling away. People started screaming. Catherine tells me, because she was a little closer to the building, that uh, the police began yelling, run, run. And uh, thousands of people started running away from the building. There they were falling. That was, of course, followed by an onrush of ambulances, I mean, ambulances and uh, special police vehicles. Some people have told us, so I can't confirm this, that dozens of stories of the building have fallen away, maybe down as low as the 30th floor. Uh, and again, just uh, uh, because we lost a little bit at the beginning, where are you physically now? This is I'm the just south of the Holland Tunnel in downtown Manhattan, perhaps 10 to 15 blocks north of the World Trade Center. Got it. And uh, the pictures that our uh, viewers are looking at, this was that collapse of uh, the South Tower Correct. just a few minutes ago here in New York. Yes, and moments after that, people began running toward us. Uh, Jennifer West, our little woman is in the stock exchange, was okay. only about five blocks away, and she's our same thing. Uh, Alan, thank you. Let me go to uh, one of New York's deputy mayors, Randy, the former deputy mayor. What are you hearing, Randy? Um, I only know what I have seen on television. Uh, I'm trying to talk to some friends. Hand me the microphone. There we go. I only know what I have uh, heard on television. I've tried to speak to some friends, obviously. Phone lines, kid catch this difficult. Um, Nothing prepares you in life for a senseless tragedy like this one, but there is no city better prepared to deal with such emergency situations than New York City. Tell me, based on your plan, what is happening during Block the Way? Um, Mayor Julian and I established early on an Office of Emergency Management to coordinate all the government agencies involved. So you have coordinated leadership of uh, police, fire, health, all the city agencies uh, responding to that emergency. Uh, they plan for this kind of event. Unfortunately, this is not a unique occurrence in the life of New York City or our country. Uh, tragedies like this are not a unique occurrence, but it is a very rare and extraordinary It is extraordinary. Right. And therefore, therefore, uh, in New York City, we have coordinated response, and they're responding now and providing every help that they can under these extraordinary circumstances. Hang on one second. We have a report now of an explosion on Capitol Hill, and we are checking that out. We have a report of a plane crashing at the Pentagon, the Pentagon being evacuated, uh, fire on the mall in Washington, the State Department evacuating, uh, and we have all flights shut down across the country as officials sort out what's happening here. Uh, Rain back to you for a second. How much of the, well, if I recall this correctly, there is a, what was, Called a bunker, the mayor's bunker for these sorts of events in the trade center, right? Uh, there is an emergency management center at the trade center. Is uh, that clearly the mayor's not there? Um, I, I have not spoken with the mayor, so I don't know his physical location, but I do know that coordinated emergency response started immediately. Um, it's something that the city prepares for, and it's something that you know, under these tragic circumstances, the city is doing everything they can to respond. How much of the plan changed after the World Trade Center bombing on the Well, there was no coordinated city response. There was no more of an emergency management. Rudy Giuliani established that on what's going on the hallmarks of this tenure. And unfortunately, there are extraordinary circumstances like this one where that coordinated effort has to come into play and is coming into play now. Why don't you, if you can, stay with us for a little bit. Uh, I suspect other questions are going to come up. Uh, I, I just uh, I want to go through, again, what we know here at this point, and also point out some things that are not insignificant that we don't know. And one of the things we don't know is we do not now know how many fatalities there have been and how many injuries there are. Uh, we can only surmise that this has been catastrophic. Uh, a catastrophic event here in New York, both trade center towers hit. One of them appears to have collapsed, how much of it collapsed, but uh, very much. Uh, in any case, we cannot tell you how many uh, injuries, how many fatalities there have been. This is one of those situations that is extraordinarily chaotic. Uh, even, even in the best of planning, I think it's fair to say, that it is chaotic and officials are trying to do many things at one time. We have on the phone a pilot who witnessed these uh, planes crashing in to the World Trade Center. Uh, sir, can you tell me your name? 
John, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Uh, John, tell me what you saw. Uh, this morning we were at uh, Midtown Manhattan in uh, a 31st floor of a building facing south. We saw a 767 flying low down the center of Manhattan Island heading towards downtown Manhattan. At about uh, maybe 20 blocks north of the World Trade Center, we saw the plane veer to the left and fly directly into the north side of the South Tower. So this was the second uh, plane that hit the tower, correct? This was the first plane. Got it. John, this is 767. Got it. John, hang on. It's no like that. We'll go. Uh, Kate, what can you tell us about the events there? Well, I'm a couple of blocks away from the Capitol right now. I can tell you that about a half an hour ago, the Capitol building itself was evacuated. Uh, it was a little bit chaotic. Everyone was running out of the building. People ran a couple of blocks away. We are now just pushed back by security. We're within two blocks of the Capitol. I did see myself a plane about a half an hour ago circling over the Capitol. Now, whether that may have been an Air Force, a U.S. plane, is unclear. It, uh, that seemed to be the reason, according to the security guards that I talked with, for the evacuation of the Capitol. They had seen something or heard something suspicious. They've evacuated the Capitol and the surrounding buildings, the office building, at least on the house side, which is where I'm standing. There are three house office buildings. Those have also been evacuated. Uh, we're seeing members of Congress are walking by us here on the sidewalk. Um, hey. I can also, you go ahead. Hey, I'm sorry, and if you said this, I apologize, uh, and I apologize to viewers too. Uh, was there, to your knowledge, an explosion at the Capitol? No, sir, there was not. Uh, I, I cannot, I can see the Capitol from here, everything looks to be fine. There was, however, Aaron, a, a sound about five minutes ago that sounded like a bomb explosion. Uh, what exactly happened 
at the Pentagon this morning. As we were driving into town on Frey 95, there was an exit. We were trying to get off the exit for the Memorial Bridge. Off to the left hand side was a commercial plane that came in and was coming too fast and too low. And the next thing we saw was to go down below the side of the road and we just saw the fire that came up after that. How large was the explosion? Uh, it was large. Was there a sound as well? Um, we got our can't be up, I can the windows wet right in the vehicle. Was it clear to you what happened? Yeah, definitely. So you believe it was a commercial airliner that was uh, hitting the Pentagon? Yes, and I'm not sure exactly where the Pentagon where it was in relationship to where the plane went down. You know, but they were relatively close to one another. Whether it hit any part of that Pentagon, I'm not sure. How low was the plane? When it was coming down? Yeah. It, it, it was coming down on a, uh, less than a 45 degree angle and coming down towards the side of the um, 395. And when it came down, it just missed the 395 and went down below it and then you saw the, 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 the uh, fire smoke on it. Were you able to see what kind of plane or what, what airline it belonged to? No, I did not see what kind of an airline. I just assumed because it was, we were so close to the airport, it was coming into land. But it seemed off the low to you? Yeah. How big was the fireball? Um, I was very short of time the time, and it was pretty big. What do you think was happening? Um, I know that the hit the ground and exploded. Were you frightened yourself? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, everybody stopped the car and we all got that for it. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate you for talking to us. Aaron, back to you. David, thank you. We've seen as David and sort of in Washington. CNN Brian Palmer joins us on the phone from here in Manhattan. Brian, why don't you begin by telling me where you are? We are in front of the criminal courthouse after being pushed north from the. We watched one of the towers of uh, the World Trade Center disappear from the skyline. It basically melted into itself in a pool of gray smoke. A crowd of thousands of people dashed up the wrong way home by emergency services personnel. Um, all we know now, we're watching the proof of smoke uh, and the green is sort of washed, uh, washed across uh, lower Manhattan. And people are lining up at the state phone behind me trying to find out uh, where they're going to stay. Well, I'm going to just briefly go to Randy. Randy, just look out there and tell me what you think when you see what now appears that he's part of one of the landmark buildings in this city one of the most recognizable buildings in the country is gone. It's the kind of moment you hope will never come. Uh, when you have been in government, when you care as much about this city and this country as a mayor like Rudy Giuliani does, it's a moment you pray will never come, and you pray for the families of anyone uh, affected by this tragedy. Uh, but as a city, you know, we come together and our emergency services provide every support they can in the face of such a senseless tragedy. It's a, it is an unbelievable scene. It's you, incredible. You look down and when we stand here at some point every day looking out at the city this time of year, it's extraordinarily pretty, and you see those two buildings high above Lower Manhattan, and you look out there today and you see this baby hole in one of them. There's plumes of smoke that continue to pour from the scene, and you, and you know that there's nothing behind, there's nothing power, or these parts that are gone. We join now uh, one of our affiliates, WNYW, and their coverage here in New York. States or into Canada, guys, into the United States, international flights headed 
for the United States. Our team sent to Canada now to airports there as all air traffic in the United States has come to a halt. The FAA has shut down every airport in the country and to our knowledge, and we're, uh, to, to the best of our memory, that has never happened before. We're starting to get some uh, pictures of the scene uh, from the ground here in Manhattan. Uh, again, this all started about almost an hour and a half ago, I guess, a little more than that. Uh, this is a live picture of the scene now. Uh, we have crews on the ground and they've been trying to get tape back so we can show you the situation on the ground. As you can imagine, literally uh, thousands of police, fire, rescue officials uh, have converged on the scene. Uh, there are, and we don't know how many, injured to be tended to, to be taken to hospitals. And we continue to check hospitals to find out uh, how many, the extent of injuries. We do not yet know how many fatalities. There is the scene. This is tape now from uh, WABC here in New York. Uh, their crew shot this picture. As you see, uh, fire trucks and firefighters, rescue personnel at the Trade Center about 30 blocks from where we are right now. And you can see these huge columns of smoke uh, coming off of the front tower and then a bit from the back. As you see, again, the crews working their way towards the, towards the tower itself. It was 1993 uh, that I suspect many of these same firefighters converged on these very same towers uh, after the bombing in the, in the garage level. The, help me with this, but I'm pretty sure it was in the garage when, I, right, when a rider truck came in and blew up in the garage. I'm not sure it was a rider truck, but a truck came in and uh, blew up in the garage. And that was in 